Oh, welcome back to Wednesday's video where we discuss the 10 most traded players in the fantasy football market right now. Me and Jamar are going to go through fantasy calc's list of the highest frequent traded players. That didn't make sense, but you know what I mean. From fantasycalc.com, they pull in uh, real league data, sleeper, et cetera, from their APIs. And each player has a certain uh, ratio or percentage of, of uh, the number of trades overall that they are involved in. Therefore, they are probably the most traded players in your leagues as well. We're going to talk about whether or not we would buy, hold, or sell by writing them on the dry erase board. So first guy up on this list, Calvin Ridley. This was a common Nicky. Stain. It was a common Nicky dub from last week. So Calvin Ridley. Yes. End the video. One for one. <laughs> Got a hold on Rid. Last week, we both, I think we were both actually like trying to be conservative and we ended up being a little bullish. Said he's like, he's still in that 16 to 20 range. Even that, I'm feeling like we might have been a little high on, but I still think he's a low end wide receiver too. You don't want to just. I don't remember. I'm, I actually don't know where I settled. I don't, I think I might have said sell on him because I think last week I, I forgot so you could do hold. So I did buy or sell for everyone. I definitely wasn't <laughs> buying. I just think he's kind of come back down to earth and settled in where he is. And this is still without Zay Jones. So who knows what happens when Zay, Zay Jones, Jones is, is when back. He's better, though. Weirdly enough, yeah, like the stats do say <laughs> it that. Spreads it out. I don't know what it is, but. I don't know if it's because uh, Christian Kirk is obviously cooking. Evan Ingram is cooking. I wonder if this is almost like, um, I don't know, uh, opponents, their defense, their mindset is just like, we're putting our number one cornerback on Calvin the entire game yeah. and kind of shutting him down. We were kind of hoping, I think, like Ridley was good enough as a route runner that it that wouldn't matter. matter unless he was, you know, facing whoever, like Sauce or somebody yeah. like that. But I think it's very clear that he is not the guy we wanted him to be after week one. And last week like, was bad. I like, can't really come up with a number that supports that, but he's still averaging right around seven targets a game on the season. Like, that's okay, yeah. especially a player at his level. Like, still some hope. The Jags are also like a team that's getting better as the season is progressing, yeah. which typically happens with good teams. Would you rather have Christian Kirk or Ridley rest of the season? I think I got to go Kirk. Yeah, I think so too. There's like something in me that's still like, nah, mm -hmm. Ridley, he's got more upside, but like, does he? Probably yeah. not. I, I mean, that's the thing. We're seven weeks in. Like week two, week three, you could chalk up any excuse you want, but now it's like. If Kirk was, um, let me look at the wide receiver rankings right now. So Christian Kirk right now is the, well, surprising, I'm half PPR. He's the wide receiver 16. If he had a good week one, remember he had the dud That's week one? That is dragging him down. If he had a good week one, I think we'd be ranking him as a wide receiver one probably every week because he's damn near like seven for 70 and yeah. a touchdown every week. It's pretty crazy. He gets the softest matchups, I feel like, on the defensive side of the ball. He's obviously not as explosive, I feel like, and doesn't no. make as many like cool plays. Well, but I think it's just he's going to be what he was last year, 1,100 yards. I don't even remember what the tutties was, probably like seven or eight. Yeah. If I had to guess. It like, might have been even north of that. Positive, that's exactly where he's going to be by the end of this year. I don't think he's going to be so great he pushes that 1,300, 1,400, but he's definitely clearing that 1,000 mark again. I think I'm with you there. I would take Kirk over Ridley rest of season. There's a lot of players I would take Ridley over. But I think at, you have to. At this point, it's can't. You could buy him low, I guess, but I think still on name value. Like, if you watch any trade target video every single week, it's high low on Calvin Ridley. You know what I think? I think would be a really cool idea if someone's good at building this. Even fan, the guy at Fantasy Calc might be able to build this. You know how like uh, Fantasy Pros runs the expert consensus rankings? Oh, like a, yeah, okay. I think well, I see where you're going. Where go you ahead. make the rankings. Like yeah, that yeah, website yeah. runs an actual tournament each year where all the analysts get like graded. Mm -hmm. There should be a trade portion of that where, you know, m maybe you submit your five sell candidates and five buy candidates. And it doesn't just go off of like whether or not they did good the next week. Obviously, if you say like buy Jamar Chase, mm -hmm. it should go off of where they finish on the year. Well, yes, but I was going to say almost like, all right, if you, if you tell people to buy the wide receiver seven at the time, of course, they're going to have a good game, but it should be like how much better than yeah. where you told them to buy. Did that end up as a wide receiver some two? Right. Some crazy algorithm that like factors in, yeah. in actual value because I think, you know, and, and we're probably guilty of this at some point throughout the year too, but like continuously just saying every single week, buy this guy until he finally hits is like super fucking detrimental to yeah. fantasy players. You know? If you did that, that. That's been me with Waddle the first yeah. seven weeks of the season it's happened a lot i mean aaron jones too like i've been on that train as well and we've both been victims to it but like there needs to be a point where not every player who has a shiny name needs to be like a buy candidate mm -hmm. you know what i mean like i think sometimes it's better to go after less maybe this is the point i'm getting at but like less risky players less volatile players because you give up even dudes like zach moss like, 
guys that come to mind, sorry to uh, cut you off, but I'm just like kind of on a run yeah, right now. Ahead. Jacoby Myers is a dude. Who, I was ex- that's exactly like week one, week two. Before. That was a guy that I brought up that I was like, dude, I, I think like he's a guy that I really want because I think he's going to be steady and stable. And week one, week two, you didn't have to pay for him. You know what I mean? Nothing. And those are guys that they're low risk, but if they hit, they're going to be nice, stable flex pieces for you. Whereas Calvin Ridley's and the Jamar Chases and stuff, the name value makes you, you got to swing big. You're swinging for a home run there. And if it doesn't hit, it's super detrimental to your team. Exactly. Jacoby Myers was exactly where I was going with, so you, you nailed it. Yeah. So uh, Calvin Ridley, we're both holding on just because I think his value is just in a weird spot where if you have him, I'm more reluctant to be like high on him right now. So I almost is want... It- are you still starting him every week? Yeah. I feel like I am too. Like, yeah, I don't think you have play the guessing four options there. better than him. Yeah, um, I do think maybe though this week in particular, week eight, there's no, no buys. Buy. Yeah, I think there's a world where you sit him. Um, I don't think most teams are going to be able to do mm-hmm. that. So I think more often than not, I'll probably give you like an okay game in, in PPR. James Cook. Like, I think I think what we should do is if we have a hold on him, you should also do like a slash. If you had to lean one way or the other, which way would you go? That's what I, I think we should do that. Gonna get a lot of slashes today. Mm-hmm. You've changed me. I'm a changed man. Hold by. I'm not gonna lie. I think I put. I didn't put like huge weight, but I legitimately thought this Bills team was signing Leonard Fournette. Really? I, I really thought they were. They still could. Um, yeah. I saw somewhere today like Fournette said he was gonna sign somewhere. I could see them trying to bring in a veteran running back. I think that probably affects the goal line. Latavius Murray. Yeah. More than it affects James Cook. I just think at the end of the day, James Cook is their most explosive running back. He's the one using the passing game. We shouldn't expect touchdowns out of him, but I did like to see the red zone score. I kind of think that's probably a staple. And it's not a big factor, but Dawson Knox is having wrist surgery. And I think like anytime you can condense the offense a little bit. I kind of wish we got like the tight ends and QBs on here. Like Kincaid would be a good topic right now. Yeah, it would be a great topic. I'd be buying the shit out of him. Um, Yeah, I like James Cook. I think he's an above average player in, for the most part, an above average offense. a stronger floor than I realized. Ceiling definitely has a limit, but I, and I did have like a... Unfortunately, like eight point game the other day in half PBR, but mm-hmm. still, like I don't think people realize how many carries he's yeah, getting. You're not getting any two, three, fours. Like. There aren't a ton of running backs getting the amount. Of, I actually want to see where he ranks in terms of just overall carries. He's 16th in carries. That's solid. 16th, 88 in seven games, which is who's one? Is it ETN still? ETN 127, C Mac at 125, Jacobs at 118. Um, those guys all played more games than Moss and Walker, who are four and five. But uh James Cook, so 88 carries, 20. I think that's the biggest like letdown for Cook is he has 17 receptions in seven games. You pace that out to full 16, 17 games, that might be less than 40, which is it's not a lot. Really disappointing for someone that was supposed to be a big time pass I, catcher. I'm curious what his efficiency is though, or it's per reception. That's going to be high because yeah. he's always 10.9. Yeah. Okay. 4.8 yards per carry, 10.9 yards per reception. That's what I mean. Like he is just really good for what they're asking him to be. And sometimes, sometimes we like to overthink like, oh, I wish he averaged like two more carries a game. But realistically, what is that? Like 0.8 fantasy points if he gets that. So I think he's just, again, I go back to like above average explosive player in a really good offense. So won't really overthink that. Smitty. Got hold by. Big buy. Him sitting at wide receiver 22 feels a little rich to me. But low end wide receiver too. Maybe that's about right. I think, I, I think that's probably right he's not a he's not a player you're gonna get a lot from it's, it's just to me i think you're buying him to stay right there i don't know if he's getting back to the high wide receiver two again yeah because no one is buying him yeah like you're not getting a good price for him necessarily no. especially aj brown's just been a monster the last you know, month and a half of the season goddard's even come on which is taken away from smith so you're gonna need some aj brown regression but i mean <laughs> brown seems to be the staple and then it's like Going back and forth between Smith and Goddard. I do think Smith is getting ample amount of uh, chances, though. He's getting mm-hmm. a lot of, like, deep balls, and he's been missing by a few. He's uh, some uncharacteristic drops that are, like, the different. When when you're a player like Smith. Especially Smith's, the week before right? versus the Jets. Yeah. When, but yeah, when you're a player who's probably getting, like, five to six targets in a game, you kind of got to make the most of him. And he's always been a wildly efficient player throughout his career. So Smith is a guy. Um, we're worried about the competition, though, within the same receiving room. What, A.J. Brown? The other one. The better one. Alameda, Quez, Greg Ward. <laughs> Keep going. Jazzer Swift. Keep going. Kenneth Gainwell. Getting there. Lawson Scott. No. Nope. Trey Sermon. The go. Jalen Hurts. The go. I Marcus just Mariota. I just traded for him. Dallas Goddard. I just Jack Stoll. <laughs> you caught up. Tyree I'm Jackson. Like, you think I didn't know who it was from know. the very first no, fucking I, thing? I, <laughs> I went down to Trey Sermon. <laughs> no, I, I once you hit uh the the uh, Boston Scott, but it took me a while to find out. Good Lord. Um, I was actually looking at Julio's numbers. So I wanted to see how many snaps he played. He played like 30% of the snaps in Not his first game. Not bad for like getting thrown in there. Yeah, I could see him like uh, getting into the wide receiver through. I'm not actually nervous about him. 
He's kind of like the wide receiver version of James Cook, and they're actually valued exactly the same. RB22, wide receiver 22, where explosive, well we know that he's... We actually have a more uh, comprehensive track record of Devonta Smith, obviously, being a good NFL player. Again, I, I still think... Outside of like Hertz throwing to AJ Brown, this offense has looked a little bit like it's not itself. They're they're getting back to it, yeah. I think. But like kind of like the Jags, maybe not the Jags yeah. were really slow, but like there was just something like a time timing was like a tick off, and we're starting to see it. I think come back to its normal self, where Smith may be inconsistent, but you know you know the big players are coming. Mm-hmm. I think you take the good with the bad. Attach you a good offense. Just an offense you want a piece of, regardless of who we're talking about. Really, yeah. I want to check the schedule real quick. Mm-hmm. All right, so they got the Commanders. And then it's eh, well, it's the Commanders, the Cowboys, Chiefs, Bills, Niners, Cowboys, Seahawks, Giants, Cardinals. Ah, uh, I'm not as scared of that schedule. Commanders, I'm not scared of at I, all. Their secondary is terrible. Fantasy wise, no. I, I, the Eagles themselves, their record could take a couple. Yeah, hours. like they yeah. they'll definitely maybe lose like one or two over the next five. But the Cowboys are probably the only actual defense on the schedule that they play twice, and they'll they'll have their number. I think once at least. Yeah, but I, I think matchup-wise, like, Dallas shouldn't really hurt Devontae. Yeah, and that's what I mean. It's like the Chiefs, that should be a high-scoring game. The Bills are not. They're kind of like a, a mediocre at best defense now with all the injuries. Niners will be a tough one, obviously, but I also think you could throw against them a little bit. We saw yeah. that with Addison last night. who's a Kirk similar Cousins. player to Devonta Smith. Yeah, yeah, Smith is for sure a buy for me. All right, let's move on to the GOAT. Another common Nikki clicky dub, Zach Mouse. You're going to die on this hill, aren't you? I'm, you mean I'm going to thrive on this hill? What are you buying? Dude, what do you mean? He had another 18 touches this week. His fantasy points have gone down every single game since JT's been back. Dude, th- well, that's... I don't give a shit about his touches. Like, well, that's why the you reason think... you're about to hate on Joe Mixon in five minutes is the exact reason because you're he's down on Zach. Because Moss. Joe Mixon is a, a mid RB two. Zach Moss is valued as borderline an RB four. That's where he should be. No, what do you think he's worth? Like, when are you gonna start him? I would start him fucking every week. There There's wasn't been a week away. up to this point that I wouldn't have started him. That is fine up to this point, but this is I have the liked, turning point. I, yes, I like Jonathan. I'm not saying I prefer Zach Moss over JT rest no, of the no, season. No, 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 no. But Moss is, the offense is surprisingly kind of fucking fire right now. Yeah. They're scoring points, and they're, I'm not saying he's going to be better than JT going forward. And efficiency-wise, I think JT is like back to being his RB1 self, but they so fucking clearly want to use two running backs in this backfield. Like stay, Shane Steichen coming over comes from Philly. They yeah. use multiple running backs there, dude. I think you might be underestimating the fact that like Zach Moss could be a flex play. I don't. Th- I just don't think I can throw him in the lineup moving forward. I agree. He exceeded beyond what I even thought was like a bullish take on him while JT was out. I just don't see moving forward how you're still starting him in your lineup. I feel like you're just hoping he scores. I don't know, dude. It's a lot of touches. And Minshew throws the ball to the running backs often. I know, like, JT is going to eat more and more into the workload, but I still think even if Zach Moss is getting 40% of the snaps, he's extremely... There's so many committee committees in the NFL that use, like, multiple running backs, and I think Indy has somehow become, like, one of the most valuable. I don't know why. All right. Indy plays New Orleans, which is tough on the ground. I don't feel great about starting him there. That would probably be a game that I'd be hesitant to start on, but they play Carolina the week after that. Have no problem playing Zach Moss there. At New England is tough. By Tampa Bay, Tennessee, Cincy, Pittsburgh, Atlanta, Vegas. All right, so I'm I'm a little bit more hesitant because the schedule is is soft, mm-hmm. but I still think Moss is going to get a decent amount of touches there. Buying the okay. fuck out of him, trading the house for him. Good bench player you're buying. Devontae Adams switching up on us. Last listen, last week so he was my. So you look candidate. at wide receiver ten as a good value. I officially think like he might not finish as a wide receiver one. I think there's a chance for that, but I don't think there's a lot of receivers that bring... It's easy to look at the last couple games where Jimmy G wasn't playing, but I think when Jimmy G's back on the field, Adams rocks the fucking target numbers and stuff. I think he'll be fine. I don't think it'll be great, but he can always have those like eight for 150, two touchdowns, and he's starting to become the squeaky wheel where I think they're just going to force it his way. You think? I mean, he's going to pitch him on until he's out of Las Vegas if they don't. I don't know. I, I think those can all happen. It's just Jacoby really seems that good. Yeah, like, Jacoby is kind of him. I guess maybe I would go more towards hold. I probably should have put a hold by. But at wide receiver 10, I'm, I'm trying to think of who the guys are above him. Mm, I guess now that I'm looking at it, like if Puka's a wide receiver 12. Like above him's probably like Amon Ra, Jamar. Yeah, easy, like, easy. Take those guys. I, I guess is there anyone behind him we would... Like CD, is he above? That's a good discussion to have. Who would you take, CD or Devontae? I feel like I like CD. Oh, God, that's gross. But the way Jacoby Myers is not stopping... I don't think I have a choice. I think I would go a slight lean towards Adams there. If I was able to assume Jimmy G back next week. Do you think it's like, I feel like he's been banged up a lot this year. 
Yeah. No, didn't he? he? Or maybe he was in concussion and cleared or something. Well, he was, I guess, because Aiden O'Connell started a game. So, yeah, yeah he's been a little he's it's been like, a little banged is up. Is he going to survive with this whole line That's a good question. Like, I'm getting a li- little theoretical, but it's like twice in seven games he's missed now. That's a fair point. Yeah, you're right. Maybe I'm it, a little too high on that. And it was like um, when the Jimmy G's news came out about his back, it's like it could have been so much worse. We got lucky. I'm like, one more <laughs> hit. What if he could does? Paralyzed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, it was crazy. Remember in the summer when like no one really wanted Tua because of how close he was to concussion? It hasn't even been. No one's even brought no, it up once this year. Not even it's absolutely question. nothing. All right. He's due. I mean, Jimmy G can be, should be sharing <laughs> hospital bed soon. Justin Jefferson. So I write my paragraph. Hold slash buy. I got to sell. I think this is where we were last week. Yeah. I didn't I didn't change much. To be I, honest. I feel better about him coming back at this point than I did last week, though. Yeah. And I got to say, if you don't mind pulling out the Viking schedule, they might have a little bit of juice in them to get something. Could they look at like a, oh, my God, we could finish nine and eight. Maybe we could get that wild card spot. Like, I'm kind of basing this off of this team having a chance and still fighting for something. Green Bay, Atlanta, New Orleans, Denver, Chicago, by Las Vegas. Like, could they win Cincinnati, four out Detroit. of the next six or something? Yeah. I, I, with some luck, I think it's certain. Yeah. I mean, they could definitely win. They, be, they'd have to be a good team. Like, there is no... Green Bay, Denver, Chicago are three of the next five. They could definitely... Those are winnable-ish games. You need to split Atlanta, New Orleans. Yeah. They got to win one of those. You're right. I, I actually... I'm not really with, like... I think Jefferson's coming back. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't I don't really put a concern on that. My... I guess my concern is, like, how long... I think when he's healthy, he comes back. But will he wait till a hundred per hundred percent? Yeah, like the IR thing again doesn't mean four weeks. It could, and a lot of reports were like he's probably closer to six weeks than four weeks. So I don't know how many people have the luxury of of holding on to him. And the thing with Jefferson is he's so elite that you could actually get like really solid players right now. Yeah. I mean, you see wide receiver six still like yeah, that's like, above Amonra, above Chase. That's like. crazy value right there. So if I'm if, if I'm trying to compete, which I think like fantasy, I play on a week by week basis. Like if you have a Jefferson, you'll probably take an Adam CD just to get sure. Like if, if get points, someone's yeah. willing to pay that, yeah, I would take Zach Moss for him for sure. All right, T Higgins. Uh, same thing because he's on a buy. We talked about him last week. Uh, I don't remember where we stood. If you want to know our T Higgins take, go watch last week's. Yeah, I don't know either. I'm trying to think. Pookie. Pookie baby. Wide receiver 12. He was on the list last week. I think we both definitely had him as a screaming buy. I, yeah, because he, he was a dud last week versus Arizona, right? Yeah, he had a bad week. I think the narrative around fantasy was kind of obvious. Yeah, that's a horrible handwriting. Sorry. Hold he's a, buy. He's a hold if you got him. Um, I, if you got to lean. I'm right. really only putting hold because I just feel like no one's going to get rid of him. Like you can't even throw a buy because no one's shopping him. Yeah, th- this was like his, I don't, th- dumb way to put it. It wasn't his coming out game, but this was the first game I feel like people it was, weren't just box score yeah. scouting and they saw him and they're like, whoa, like yeah. he might actually be as good as his, his some numbers dominance. are. Yeah, he was really, really good. And, statement game. Yeah, I, I don't think it was surprising that he like, um, that him and Cooper Cup kind of swapped uh, box stores. You know what I mean? Like it was Cooper Cup had the big week, the prior week, and everyone's like, oh, Puka kind of, you know, went down a little bit, but it was like, yeah, they're, they're going to flip flop. No, yeah. And no matter what you said, I'm bringing it up every week because it it's coming in more and more true every week. This is a team that has a great offense, yet they're always trailing and always needing to throw the ball. Like, they throw up probably, I think, top five highest clip in the league. Like You know what's crazy? Like, and the thing is, they don't really – they never throw their running backs, and they very rarely throw their tight ends, too. So, it's like it's all Puka and Cooper Cup. So now looking at 2-2 it, two has pretty much disappeared. Yeah, he had like the one lucky touchdown yeah. catch, but I don't think that wasn't even everyone him thinks being, it was two. It wasn't his yeah. uh, him being targeted. <laughs> yeah. uh, I saw a, a stat too that was um, the percentage of targets, the percentage of throws where Puka has been the first read for Matt Safford, and it was like pre Cooper Cup. Cooper Cup was out. It's like thirty six percent of the time he was the first read. Since Cooper Cup's been back, Puka's at like thirty five point seven percent. It hasn't yeah. changed at all. So he's still. It, it's just them two. Over Is that again. like a tweet found, or Is that something you could look up? We can look it up. I'll, okay. It's on a I forget website, but I'll sh- I'll show you how to do it. But it, w- it was a tweet from somebody. We'll put it up on gut. We'll put it up on the screen. Uh, but Puka, yeah, I mean, this is not fucking groundbreaking. Puka and Cooper Cup are just guys you keep on your team because you want to fucking win fantasy yeah. games. That's it. I, I really think the thing this would hurt Puka is something that happened to Stafford. I think there's That's no it. other concern. That's it. Yeah, I don't understand. Yeah, there's nothing else that could. He can go zero for zero next week, and I like wouldn't be concerned. I don't think number ten. Bijan Robinstein valued at the RB four, which seems a little hefty. It feels rich. He's sitting at what the RB ten right now in fantasy. I, yeah, I think it was eleven something. RB ten or eleven, factoring in the game that he just played because he had one touch or whatever, had a migraine, etc. RB four so high. RB four is really high. I'm trying to go through my head real quick, like who might. Me too. Let me pull it up. C Mac, Etn, Eckler, Bijan, and it's Pollard, Kamara, Brees Hall, Derrick Henry, Kenneth Walker down at RB nine is wild. I think that sounds low. Yeah. Pretty fucking good. 
Dude, he's been so... I, I think I would take Walker. I think Walker would be my RB3. Possibly RB2. Like C-Mac. All right. So what? why don't we yeah. write down like guys we would take over? Or do you I, want to stick with buy sell? Let's do buy sell and then we'll we'll talk about it a little bit more in depth. Good? This feels gross. Yeah. I have a hold sell for him too. At that I price. I, yeah. Like this is assuming you're not in a league that's panicking and trying to sell him after the bad game. I'm considering overall, I just, the rest of the season, I think I'm taking four, there's four running backs I would take over B. John. If we're starting from a 0-0 zero, zero slate. All right, 0-0 zero, zero slate. Let's go through the list real quick. And you just go like rapid fire. Would you take them or okay. B. John? C-Mac, Travis Etienne. Yes. Eckler? Yes. Pollard? No. Kamara? No. Brees? Yes. Derrick Henry? B. John. Kenneth Walker? Yes. JT? Oh, I like JT. I'm going to say yes. Saquon? No. Jacobs? No. Mostert? Most of the tricky. So he's the one I wrote down that had a question mark because I like him. I, I really think by the end, or we might not have him. Yeah, there's like, weeks like 13 through 16. Somehow, most are going to be like the RB 40. So I guess no. I'll list like the next five, and you tell me if you'd rather have if there's anyone in there that you'd rather have over Bijan, Swift, Demont, Aaron Jones, Jameer Gibbs, Joe Mixon. Monty's kind of close to be honest. I don't I, I don't typically trade for guys that I feel like we're uncertain about with the injury stuff. You know, I feel like he's like. Just riskier Kenneth Walker. I don't know if... Yeah. But, like, Kenneth Walker doesn't have Jameer Gibbs competing with That's him. That's true. That's true. Zach Charbonnet hasn't really shown shit. You know, he's way too fucking low still. Isaiah Pacheco. RB21. He's, like... He's borderline an RB1 for me. I, I made, like, point. a... Like, would you rather him or Jacobs? I, I think I want Pacheco. Oh, man. I'm so close. I think they'd probably be, like, my RB12-13 right now in I rankings. think there's just some tax on Pacheco's name for some reason. Yeah. Like, if you threw up their stats, blind resume, probably, you, you'd easily take Pacheco. And that's easy to say. Everyone fails in a blind test, but... No, it's super fair. Jacobs, he is third in the NFL in carry still, and he's starting to get he's, a lot of work averaging again. He's like, less than three yards per carry. It doesn't look good. It's uh, disgusting. The yeah, targets really have dipped a little one. bit. The Bijan stuff is tricky because so talented... But it's very clear that they want to use someone else it, in the backfield. I think we both agree that we're not fading Bijan. It's just if people still have him as a top four back, get get your value. Let's get some dividends on that. He's going to end up with like four or five rushing touchdowns on the year if he's lucky, I think. Because once Unless, they get inside the five, they don't want to bang him up. They're, they're like yeah. really, what I think they're doing from like a game plan standpoint is saying like, hey, when I think towards the end of the year, when the game starts really mattering, we could see games where Bijan gets 25 to 30 touches. If we sneak into the playoffs, it'll be like all Bijan once mm -hmm. we get in there. But I think they're trying to hold them up, which, listen, as a Falcons fan, no one would have a problem with this if Ritter wouldn't turn the fucking ball over every five That's seconds. True. We'd be a good team, and people would like the fact that we're not using Bijan in a 30-touch capacity because we don't want him to get hurt. Because Algier takes a lot of those, like, you know, third-and-one type carries where you get absolutely fucking hammered by the <laughs> yeah. defense. And that happens on the goal line, too. Obviously, I'd like him to be used a little bit more on the goal line, but we're also not getting a ton of... We haven't seen a ton of explosive plays from Bijan, realistically. Yeah. It is it's just funny. You said it. I don't even know. We might have just said it outside of us recording. Like His only touchdowns is when he gets some one-handed snag. He never has some script written up for him to just nah, punch it in. He's like He's got to do the most. Yeah. He's got to do the, have the most unserious touchdowns <laughs> ever in order for it to count. But there are games where he just, it just, he, he, feel, he feels like, he feels like a 220-pound uh, version of James Cook. That's kind of what he feels like right now. You're probably getting 13 carries. You're probably getting four targets a game. Right. 220 pounds. But are you predicting for a touchdown on a week's basis? Probably not no. anymore. You know, they feel semi-similar right now to me. I don't even know. Is five rushing touchdowns that bullish? I don't even know. I, I probably am overestimated. I want to see the splits in between. Give me a second. And I wish we saw another week of him being healthy because week six, I brought it up to you. It was like, like 11 snaps as just an outside wide receiver when – the rest of the season, weeks one through five, the most he's done that at was five. And then I was like, okay, in week seven, is this going to be a pattern? And then he had the migraine. So we don't really know, but that is something to watch that I'll be looking for next time we see him play. Inside the five rush attempts. It's got to be. Like he has zero yeah. outside of week two. Okay. In week two, he got a goal line carry, which I think he got stuffed on, maybe. He does not have an inside the five attempt outside of week two, mostly Algier. And, and this is kind of where the problems begin. I still think he's super useful. Besides last week, he had not finished worse than the RB21 in PPR, which is RB2 numbers. It's 7, 9, 21, 12, 13, 17. But, like, when you're drafting Bijan PPR leagues, you're expecting, like, two or three top five finishes. Yeah, so consensus, him at RB4 right now is just... Crazy, because he's yet to finish there on like the year. It's still some name value. 
you just kind of hope that was. Yeah, you just kind of hope those big games come towards the end of the year. Let's check out their end of season schedule right quick. Tennessee, Tennessee, and Arizona. It's a nice fucking slate. Oh, Bye. Saints, Jets, Bucks, tough. Carolina, Indy, Chicago to round out the fantasy season. That's kind of sexy. So you have three really good. Chicago's 17 or 18? 17. Okay. Saints are 18 at Saints, which is great to have yeah. them off the schedule. So it's like three great games by three really tough games, three really good games to end the fantasy season. So I think he'll be more good than bad, but we have not seen that week-to-week ceiling on Bijan yet. Yeah, no. I think he's just going to finish as a low RB1. Yeah. All right. Any other guys you want to talk about? You know who I'll tell, who I'd say I'd buy right now? Who has been in my buy for like a month straight? Kyron Williams. Even being on the IR. Really? Yeah. I think that Sean McVay has shown so much trust in him this year that when he's, he's your boy. When he's back, I think he's gonna be the guy again. Yeah. I think for the last like four or five weeks of the season, you're getting an RB one back into your lineup that you don't have to pay that price for. Right now, obviously you're gonna be without him for a couple of weeks. Would you buy H N? I think the price on HN is probably so true. nuclear right now. <laughs> it's that it's insane. Like, I don't think anyone would trade HN for Kyron right now. Like, you're no. you're paying way more yeah. for HN than you are for Kyron. Oh, we could probably... Yeah, HN's guy that, uh, I don't know. It's like, you can't not love him, but there is still something just like mm-hmm. so you much... You are paying an RB1 price. Yeah. Whereas Kyron, I feel like you not could... Not to say that's wrong, it's just risky. Yeah. No, I, I like the K-Dubs take. And... I don't think that'll come out of a cost of Puka or Cup at all, as in the offense will be ran different. Wait, say that again? Like, do you think Kyron coming back, his success would eat into Puka and Cup? No, I just think I that, know. like, when Kyron's not there, the running back, like we saw it with um, Darrell and Royce Freeman, mm-hmm. the carry split was 18 to 20. That's all 30 carries between the running backs. When Kyron's there, that's, like, all him. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, they didn't – Henderson and Freeman didn't play at all. And then Ronnie Rivers got hurt, and then and that unlocked like, the door scores. That's like, ever's not throwing him this year really. On the goal line it's all Kyron. Yeah. And he's a good they don't throw him that much, but he's a great pass catcher. He was one of the best in the draft class that when he was drafted. So like I have a lot of faith that McVay will go right back to him um when he's healthy. I think the rest of the offense will run fine. So I'd be looking at I don't know how reasonable this is, but like I'm I'm looking in that cluster over there, like Chris Godwin, Gabe Davis. I'd be fine giving those guys up for Kyron Williams right now to be honest. They're not needle movers whatsoever. They're like wide receiver threes, flex plays. Chris Godwin. I wish I had a fucking answer about him. He just is what he is. He's yeah. just a high floor guy. One guy that I'm buying right now, what about you think about Nico Collins? Can you buy him? I feel like he's like well like no one has. I just top coming off of the guy. buy, like I think he's got a little boomer bust to him that people might not love. Um, Definitely has some flops. He does. Yeah. I think he's looked so good this year though. It, it, I mean it, if you can get him out of value, yeah. Like, I really like him, but I almost, I feel like he's probably valued like, as a top 15 guy. Rest of the season, would you rather him or Ridley? Him. Yeah. Okay. Easily. Yeah. I'm I looking at this. Okay. Let's look at the wide receivers here. Him or Devonta Smith, rest of the season? You gotta go Nico. I think I would too. Him or T. Higgs? Go. Same. What about Waddle? Assuming his back injury or whatever he fucked up recently is not serious. I'd he did still- come back, right? He He did, but he looked a little weird, I think. He looked a little sluggish. Uh, Assuming he's okay with that and he's not, like, on the injury report for the next fucking month, I'd probably go Waddle. Okay. But I think Nico's, like, fucking super solid. I think if you have him on your team, he's just an every week must start. But I I really think those are names people would bite off on, T. Higgins, Devontae Smith. Yeah, that's fair. Those names you could get rid of for Nico. Yeah, super fair. I just uh, traded that trade in Dynasty. I was talking about a couple weeks ago that I forgot to like hit accept on Ramondre for Tank Dell and John Janu. I'm pulling the trig on it. I oh, it did it. Got happen? it back on the board. Yeah. Dub. Pumped about that. A little tanky tank. <laughs> That's all we got for this week's trade video. We'll be back next Wednesday. Make sure you are subscribed to the channel. Make sure you got notifications turned on because we go live on Mondays. We go live on Saturdays. We got videos going up every single day throughout the week. I love you. He doesn't love you. We're out.